check the names off. If you pore over documents, you scrutinise them. You look at them for a long time in order to fully comprehend them, in order to take in all the information in that document. You have to pore over it first. Now, you might need to bury yourself in the documents in order to thoroughly understand them, in which case you might fling yourself into the work in order to thoroughly comprehend it. Now, uh, if you're a student, your teacher might say that this exam will count towards your final grade or your final mark, meaning that this exam counts, yeah? that it has some weight in your final mark, in your final percentage or your final grade for the year. And they may say that any questions that you get wrong will count against you, meaning that it will take down your final grade. It will it, it will, uh, your final grade will be marked down if you make any of these mistakes. These mistakes will count against you. So count towards and count against are also very useful for students. Now, if you deprive someone of their human rights, you take away their human rights in some kind of way. But if you deprive someone of food, you don't give them enough food. If you deprive someone of information you don't give them enough information so you can deprive someone of anything and it's always related to a lack of something it's when you don't allow someone to have something which they really need if you devote yourself look at that terrible spelling sorry about that one self with an e with two e's um, if you devote yourself to a project you 100% throw yourself into that project. You fling yourself into that project, yeah? Throw yourself into is also correct. Um, you, you enthusiastically um, apply yourself um, to that goal. You aim at that goal and you devote yourself to it. Remember that devotion is a very strong word. Um, husbands should be devoted to their wives and wives should be devoted to their husbands. And very often at the start of the book, you may, at the start of a book, you may see the, um, the words, um, d this book is um, not devoted to, actually, it's a different word, it's another one beginning with D. This book is devoted to my wife? No, there's another word beginning with D, I've forgotten it, so sorry, that's a bad example, I'll try and think of that before the end of the class. But um, yeah, devote yourself to means give yourself fully to some kind of project or goal. Now, you might say that this answer is related to something else. You might say that this, this book is based on the film. You might say that these answers are founded on, are grounded in. So all of these uh, expressions, they all mean to be connected to in some kind of way or to be based on. Um, based on and founded on are quite similar. Connected to is more like linked to, related to, okay? Ah, oh, dedicated to. That was the one I was thinking about for books. Dedicated. I knew it was another one beginning with D. Um, yeah, you, usually in a book you say, you see, the, this book is dedicated to my children or something like that. But I suppose it could say devoted to my children, but it's a bit weird. No, dedicated to is much better. Um, OK, if you aim at a target with your bow and arrow, you're shooting at that target. But you can also say our company is aiming at a new sector of the market, meaning we are directed towards that new sector of the market. So it doesn't have to be just with a gun or a bow and arrow. It could be with something else. But always remember that aim at or throw at or shoot at. Yeah, it means at that person. Throw something at that person, aim at that person, shoot at that person. It's when you're trying to hit that person in some kind of way. Now detract from. Um, this is very often used when a teacher is marking an essay and the teacher might say that the content has detract or the, the argument, the lack of rationality um, has detracted from the mark. Yeah, that, that It means to take away from the mark simply because it's not rational or something's not logical, usually used for arguments, for poorly formulated arguments. So if there's something um, irrational, a contradiction in the essay, you might say these contradictions detract from the conclusion, meaning that, you know, the contradictions make the conclusion weaker. They dilute the conclusion, they detract from the conclusion, they make it less rational. 
Um, if you cash in on an opportunity, you profit from that opportunity and you start raking in the cash. You start raking in thousands of dollars or hundreds and thousands of pounds. Um, so don't forget these ones which we've done before, which mean to claw in a lot of money, to rake in a lot of money. If you object to something, it means you disagree with something. You think that something is wrong or incorrect. So very often in essays at university, we have to object to certain positions and we have to put forward our own positions. Yeah, put forward and argue in favour of our own positions. Um, if you say that this restaurant caters for vegetarians, it means it has vegetarian meals on the menu. But you might say this course at university caters for beginners, meaning that it's ready to take on beginners. It's, it, it will cater for beginners. It will teach you from the very beginning. So um, this is very flexible, this one, to cater for. I, I, my lessons, uh, I tr try to make sure that my lessons cater for all students of all ages, more or less. Um, so I must admit, with complete beginners who are perhaps only three or four years old, I'm not sure that it would be best to have Skype lessons. But um, anybody above the ages of seven and, or eight, I'm certain I can make some lessons to cater for those age groups. And I already do have a few students from those age groups. Now, to contend with difficulties, problems, to contend with something, something that's uh, hard to cope with, to deal with. Contend with basically is a formal way of saying deal with or cope with or face up to a particular problem. So uh, perhaps you might say um, the poor, uh, the poor in this country have to contend with floods, disease and famine, something like that. And that's a lot of different problems to deal with. Um, OK, if a business hives off um, the, uh, I don't know, the HR department, the human resources department, it means it sells off that department. Usually they sell it off. It could just mean to separate that department for some reason, to separate that department from the rest of the building, uh, from the rest of the business, because to hive something off means to separate it from the business, usually by selling it to someone else by selling off that part of the business, maybe by farming out that part of the business to another country. Now, if you say this person heads up the HR department, it means he's in, he in charge of the HR department. So to head up means to be the head, to be in charge. If you say that uh, the new product that we are launching, the new product that we are bringing out is expected to reel in a lot of new customers, to bring in a lot of new business, to drum up a lot of business. We had that in another um, phrasal verb lesson as well. So to bring in or reel in customers, business, that kind of thing. And um, that's when we usually use these two. But remember that you can bring in a new law as well or a new, a new piece of legislation, meaning introduce. Um, so that one can be used in a couple of different ways. Um, the factory may turn out 20,000 um, 20, items per month, whatever it is. What, I'm not sure what the item could be. It could be anything. But you can say the factory turns out 20,000 items a month. The factory churns out 80,000 items a month. So we looked at churn out before. Um, there are a few with churn. You can churn something over in your mind. You can also say that the kids often play football on my grass and it churns up the grass. Churn up is also possible and it means to destroy, especially grass, churn up the grass. Um, you could also say churn up the furniture maybe, but no, grass is best. You can say that the dog churns up the grass, the cat churns up the grass. Very often used with grass, that one. But churn out means produce. And so if there is a um, prolific writer um, who churns out a lot of books per month, that means they write a lot of literature. And I try and churn out a few phrasal verb videos every month, as somebody commented on my last video. And yeah, that's a good example. It was very aptly used in that um, sentence. So if you bring out a product, you launch a product, 
if you firm up the details in the contract, it's exactly the same as iron out the details in the contract. To firm up means to make something more solid, more concrete. You could also firm up arrangements, which maybe you wouldn't iron out, or maybe you would, but when you firm up arrangements, you make them more concrete. You make, both, you make sure that both sides understand exactly what the arrangements are. If you buy out another company, usually that means you buy out all the shareholders by buying up all the shares. So they're pretty, they're certainly connected. They are related to each other, buy out and buy up. If you deal in arms, you sell arms, you sell weapons. If you deal in art, you sell art. So that's quite an easy one, I think. And if you sign someone up, well, this is usually used for football teams or sports teams when they sign up a new player. But um, you might also sign up a new student and that student signs up for your classes. They register for your classes. But you can sign up for um, weekly emails from, an, from a new website that you've found or something like that. It basically means register with the website so that you are on the email list. Oh, OK, that's a lot of phrasal verbs. Now's your time for questions rather than earlier. Um, but um, I imagine that most people with questions have already uh, gone. <laughs> so um, thanks very much for watching, everybody. I really appreciate your support and I hope to see you all soon.